Hello, and welcome to Lateral Load Anchor Basics. This video is based on the 2009 and 2012 International Residential Code and is brought to you complimentary by Building Code College. For comprehensive education on this topic and other code related topics, go to www.buildingcodecollege.com and go beyond the words. Building Code College is an ICC approved education provider and can offer continuing education units to ICC members looking to renew their certifications. We are also a proud supporter of the North American Deck and Railing Association and are happy to host the NADRA Master Deck Professional Certification Program. Both ICC and NADRA members enjoy discounted enrollment at Building Code College in thanks for their support of their industry. So let's talk a little bit about the lateral load anchor that came into the 2009 International Residential Code. First, let's look at what's always been in the code. This has been in since the 2000 International Residential Code was, pu was published. And it states, where supported by attachment to an exterior wall, decks shall be positively anchored to the primary structure and designed for both vertical and lateral loads as applicable. There's a lot of information here to discuss, but this video is going to focus on these portions. The vertical loads, these have always been understood to be handled by the ledger to band joist connection. However, the lateral loads as applicable have notoriously also been credited to the band joist and ledger connection. Recently though, there's been some questions about that. Is that okay? Can the band joist resist lateral loads? Well, what loads are applicable laterally is the first thing that has to be asked. You have wind loads, but these are uh, regionally specific, regionally specific, and we're usually going to rely on an engineer to determine these. There's also seismic loads, which again becomes a profession of an engineer. But typically, decks in our country have not been understood as having to be engineered. It's a common weekend warrior project. And then we have a live load. Most people associate a live load with a vertical load, and that's understandable, as that's the primary way this is handled in most construction. But for decks, there's a little bit different. Decks aren't contained within a structure with braced walls on all sides. So the minor loads that can occur from the human occupants moving around do indeed produce horizontal live loads, and these are not covered under the 40 pounds per square foot. They're not covered at all. There is no industry-wide accepted manner to generate or to analyze the live loads laterally produced by the movements of occupants on a deck. So, in our nation in the last decade, there's been a lot of media attention to deck collapses, such as this. Fifteen people were on the deck and injured. Very tragic stories. Except in most of these cases, it's found that these are nail failures these decks were only nailed on. In response to this, in 2007, a proposal was submitted to the IRC code change process with an argument stated here referencing back to tests that were conducted at Virginia Tech regarding a band joist to ledger connection. These were approved and put into the 2009 IRC. However, in the first hearing for the code change, the committee made a statement. The statement, let me blow it up for you, they stated, the committee urges additional study of the attachment of the band joist to the framing. Let me explain this a little bit. This is an example of a typical nailed on ledger. Folks get out on the deck and start moving around and walking around. And what happens is the various loads cause the nails to fail and pull out from the band joist. This connection is the weakest link in the chain. With the addition of the ledger connection requirements and, and um, prescription in the 2009 IRC that includes bolts or lag screws for connecting the ledger to the band joist, a very strong and strengthened chain has been created. The ledger and band joist are now certainly connected together. However, all we've done is move the weakest link down the chain. These lines represent the fastening that we might expect that holds the band joist into the home. The black lines represent those clearly 
um, described in the International Residential Code that we should count on being there. The red ones are a little more industry standard and not specifically required by the code. They cannot be counted on. The committee's statement is that they're concerned that now that this assembly has been created, a failure like this could occur. This is a legitimate concern. The, the load path for a deck must be followed all the way through until it reaches the earth. And that means ledger to banjoist to plate to foundation and finally the earth. So. A public comment was submitted in response to the committee statement, and this detail was included. It essentially bypasses the weak link of the band joist and directly connects the deck joist to the floor joist inside the home. Along with it came a little bit of code language that states, the lateral load connection required by section R502.2.2 shall be permitted to be in accordance with figure R502.2.2.3. Here we must really focus on the words, shall be permitted. This statement is merely saying that the lateral loads that are required to be resisted in the previous section we discussed are to be considered resisted and are to be permitted to be resisted with the use of that detail we showed before. It is not required for that detail to be installed, but it is required that all lateral loads be resisted. The detail originated from this document from FEMA, the Home Builder's Guide to Earthquake Resistant Design and Construction. And this is an example of the detail in that document. If we drop this down and bring in the IRC detail above, we notice something was added. A requirement that the floor sheathing inside the home be nailed at a six inch maximum on center to the joist with the hold down. Now, currently we can only count on the joist being nailed at 12 inches on center, as that's what's required for a typical floor. One must be sure that additional nails are placed to truly meet the requirements of this detail. There's another section of code that came along with the detail that states, hold down tension devices shall be installed in not less than two locations per deck and each device shall have an allowable stress design capacity of not less than 1,500 pounds. This code language is intended to better describe what is seen in the detail. However, it can be read to say that you shall install in two locations devices capable of resisting 1,500 pounds. This was misunderstood in the 2009 edition by many folks to go back to now saying no. These hold down anchors shall be installed. However, in the 2012 edition of the IRC, it was clarified that indeed, this just describes how you install the lateral load anchor if you choose to use that as your method to resist lateral loads. Here's an example of what it looks like on the outside of the deck, where a common bracket uh, available on the market and tested for the load resistance of 1,500 pounds is installed. It's not too difficult from this side. However, on the inside, it could be a little more difficult. But if the basement or crawl space is open and free like this, it's also usually not too much of a concern. However, if the basement looks more like this, there might be a little more cumbersome work involved with that installation detail. A finished basement starts to cause more problems for a deck ledger connection. Let's look above. Perhaps the deck is serving this kitchen floor, and somehow now we've got to get under this tile floor to verify or add additional fasteners so they're six inches on center on the joist that the hold down is connected to. These problems drive a very important consideration. The question must be asked, when is additional lateral restraint necessary? On all decks? Let's take a look at some examples. What about a small deck like this that's low to the ground? Do we need to tear open the ceiling inside the basement to install the lateral load anchors? What if it's a smaller deck that's low to the ground? What if it's a small deck that's not low to the ground and that's way up high with occupants underneath? What about a small deck that's connected on two sides of a house? What about three sides of the house? What if it's a larger deck connected on three sides of the house 
and there's the possibility of occupants being below. Does that make a difference? What if it's so low to the ground that there's no posts and it's essentially connected directly to the foundation? Would not the foundation restrain the lateral movement of this deck? What if it's a little bit higher, perhaps still under 30 inches? Would that make a difference? Let's go a little bit higher with it now. Do we yet need the lateral load anchors? A little bit higher at this point? When does the comfort level of the band joist connection no longer provide enough meat, enough strength to give confidence that lateral loads that are unable to be determined are resisted? What if it's the same height, but it's installed within a roof assembly with brick columns and continuous posts that run up <clears throat> from the foundation to the roof? Will this deck move laterally away from the house merely by the movement of occupants on the deck? What if it's this one? What if it's higher, but still underneath the roof? A lot more occupants could fit on this deck and thus generate a lot larger lateral load. What about the this deck? It's tall. It's hanging off the edge of a cliff. Does this one need the lateral load anchors? Perhaps it does. Or this example. The upper deck might be a good argument for additional lateral restraint, but what about the lower deck? Should we tear open the kitchen floor inside for it? What about this example? We've got a concrete patio under, but not really high enough where we'd expect occupants there. Are we worried about that? Who's going to make this decision? Currently, it's going to be the inspector. And I'm not sure that contractors or inspectors want that responsibility. There is no way at this time to calculate or determine the actual lateral load, and thus, it's sort of ambiguous. Now, obviously, not all things are going to be perfect to meet that lateral load requirement. For example, the detail only applies to solid sawn lumber with joists that are perpendicular to the band joist. What if the joists are parallel to the band joist? What if they're engineered eye joist floor systems? What other possibilities might be there that make the lateral load anchor detail not possible? Alternative methods have to be equivalent to the prescriptive method. So by the arbitrary use of 1,500 pounds, a value that truly has no calculative method for its existence, this caused some problems in the engineered wood world. For example, let's look at this. This is the detail from the Wood Eye Joist Manufacturers Association. And when joists are running parallel to the band joist and their engineered wood joist, in order to make that 1,500 pound requirement, you're looking at six feet of blocking and a long all thread rod. You're also looking at nailing the floor sheathing down to all of that blocking. So let's look at some final notes for this. A deck must be designed to resist both vertical and horizontal loads. Conventional band joists are not designed to resist lateral loads generated by deck ledger attachment. The live load produced from occupants on a deck, or the live load from occupants on a deck does indeed produce a lateral load. We just don't know what it is. There's a concern that a well-connected ledger could pull a band joist from a home when loaded laterally. There is no accepted method to determine the lateral live load that could be expected. So a permitted method is provided in the IRC. This method requires a minimum of two anchors from joist to joist capable of resisting 1,500 pounds each. These are permitted. 1,500 pounds is hard to do with engineered eye joists. As is nailing the floor sheathing at the additional six inches on center that's required on those joists with the anchor. The final takeaway is each deck needs to be considered individually. Some certainly need additional lateral load resistance, and perhaps some do not. My name is Glenn Mathewson, and I thank you for learning with me today.